from uh, dear students in today's lecture uh, we will talk about uh, introduction to uh, phylum platyhelminthes so outlines of uh, today's lecture are uh, we will discuss uh, we will introduce uh, phylum platyhelminths uh, we will also discuss the classification of uh, phylum uh, platyhelminths lecture outcomes so after watching and listening to uh, this lecture student will know about uh, what are uh, platyhelminths and what is their systematic position in uh, zoology platyhelminths or flatworms so why they are called uh, platyhelminths or uh, flatworms uh, we have discussed it helminths mean worms and platy mean uh, flat or you can say the flat forms uh, flat worm sorry uh, these are uh, called because most of them are dorso ventrally uh, flattened uh, just like my hand you see dorsally and also ventrally they are flattened that's why they are known as uh, platy helminths or they are known as flat worms most of them and uh, they are usually leaf like or oval uh, but some uh, such as tapeworms uh, and terrestrial planarians are extremely long, elongated so uh, the, the first thing is the important uh, feature of these worms are they are dorso and ventrally flattened so they are leaf like uh, uh, some are oval shaped or uh, and some terrestrial planarians and some tapeworms are Uh, extremely elongated they have very elongated uh, sizes <clears throat> like uh, uh, flat worms they range in size uh, from microscopic to over 60 meters in length so it's a very huge length uh, these worm uh, lack a coelom so platy helminths they uh, don't have a coelom uh, but they uh, possess a well developed mesoderm uh, which later on in adult worms become uh, parenchyma uh, parenchyma reproductive organs and musculature uh, traditionally the phylum uh, contain four classes which we, which we will discuss later uh, free living uh, platyworms are included in class turbellaria so uh, turbellarian uh, they are mostly uh, free living so th these uh, free living turbellarians Uh, this name it is uh, uh, not uh, longer no longer recognized the turbellaria but we will uh, use this term turbellaria as a common noun uh, to refer to generally those free living or ecto commensal platy uh, helminths that typically have ciliated epidermis as adults so actually is no longer recognized as turbellarians but we will use it uh, for our convenience uh, uh, platy helminths uh, they are bilaterally symmetrical or symmetrical uh if you remember i also told you that uh, write down the uh, detailed characteristics of the general characteristic of uh, platy helminths in your notebooks and your uh, practical notebooks so uh, i hope uh, you have done that and you are already uh, familiar with these uh, general characteristics of platy helminths uh, we will give it a quick review i think you are already familiar so platy helminths they are bil bilaterally symmetrical it means that uh, you can divide them into two equal halves or you can say to two uh, equal mirror uh, images uh, and this uh, have a different interior end so they have an interior end with associated sensory and motor neuron elements and th this nervous system uh, is surprisingly elaborate uh, or conspicuous or clear in many uh, species and it helps them uh, to enable a very, very variety of habitats on the planet i mean they are found in lakes they are found in streams they are they may be found in uh, moist terrestrial environments in ocean sediments from one pole to another pole so they are like uh, distributed from one pole to another and they are living in a, in a variety of habitat because of their uh, this develop uh, nervous system Now, uh, another important characteristics of uh, flatworms are it uh, their body uh, the bodies of other uh, animals they are very hospitable 
two tap worms and uh, you will find many of the flatty helminths and a parasitic association so uh, other animals they are uh, the rest of the animal kingdom is very hospitable to plate worms and many of the plate worms are parasitic in nature uh, uh, as we discussed uh, in, in the very first lecture that uh, a parasitic life is very much uh, strange like you will see a parasite uh, as, parasit as parasitizing another animal but the parasite by itself will be uh, like acting as a host for other parasites and that parasite and that parasite will be host for another parasite so uh, the same case is that uh, many of the platforms uh, they can also serve as host for other platforms uh, so they may be parasitized by other uh, platforms uh, like for example uh, some cercaria uh, you know these are the transmission stages of the trematodes uh, various uh, stages between the uh, from the egg to the adult uh, worm there are many stages which are known as cercaria meta cercaria uh, so the, the, the cercaria stage actually they can penetrate into planaria uh, planaria is a plain helminth and insist in them and become an infective stage which is known as meta cercaria and that meta cercaria will then enter to another uh, step of the complex life cycle uh, of course uh, there will be another host uh, another important thing if, uh, regarding flatty helminths physiology is uh, that they cannot like synthesize uh, new de novo mean new uh, fatty acids or sterols uh, so th th this is why you will find most of the plate worms and associations and symbiotic association with other organisms or you will find them as commensals or parasites uh, so these are uh, free living uh, air sea turbarians uh, they sometimes uh, like considered as an example of the or a straight to of the ancestral platforms uh, also seem to lack this ability uh, indicating that the parasite uh, forms may uh, not have lost it secondarily in their evolution uh, as we know that uh, the bodies of uh, plate worms or plate helminths they are very soft and they don't have any like hard cal calciferous uh, structures they, that's why uh, they have left a relatively poor uh, fossil record uh, but some evidences suggest that they have been on earth for eons mean centuries for a very long time they are living uh, on earth for uh, for a very long time uh, a fossil record uh, from a slab of permian siltstone have been interpreted as those of alien planarian uh, the tegument so the tegument and uh, uh, flatty helminths it varies among major taxonomic groups uh, mean the upper layer the skin tegument uh, generally speaking turbularians uh, and some free living stages of uh, cystoda and termatoda have a ciliated epithelium uh, which uh, in some cases is their primary mode of locomotion uh, this epithelium is very thin and it's being formed of a single layer of cell and contains many glandular cells and ducts from sub epithelial glands so from sub epithelial uh, layer there are like glandular cells and glandular ducts in the uh, epithelium in the epithelium or in the tegument sensory uh, nerve endings are abundant in the epithelium and some uh, flat worms uh, cells that produce adhesive secretion are uh, paired with those that produce releasing secretions and the combination is normally known as do gland or the adhesive system so these are uh, trematoda the class trematoda and the class histoda uh, they have lost their external cilia except uh, they these are present in their larva stages but in adults they have been lost uh, during metamorphosis of these parasitic forms the larval epidermis is replaced by sensational adult tegument 
so uh, uh, when they are larva larva they have these external cilia and this larval epidermis but in adults they are replaced by the sensational tegument a new tegument so the nuclei of which are in cell bodies they are known as cytons and they are liquidated beneath a superficial muscular layer so uh, that's the name uh, new dermata which is known as new skin has been used in some classification to distinguish uh, such uh, worms uh, from free living species that retain the ciliated epithelium as adults so then embedded in the tegument in most free living terbarians and in members of uh, a trematode genus rhabdopius are numerous rod like bodies and these rod like bodies they are unknown as rhabdites uh, so these rhabdites, uh, the function is like uh, defense, defensive. They secrete mucus secretion or distasteful secretion, uh, which repel their uh, like uh, uh, predators. Uh, so uh, as I told you, the function in the previous slide, but like uh, to um, uh, many workers, uh, their function is not always clear. But many authors have like uh, reported that uh, it attributes to the lubrication uh, where uh, through which the worm may slide and adhesion to uh, certain surfaces uh, and I told you the repellency or they repel the predators because they are distasteful and uh, these rhabdites are mostly uh, generally they are absent from symbiotic turbularians. Uh, uh, most of the platform body uh, uh, or the platyhelminth body that is made up of parenchyma. What is parenchyma? Parenchyma is uh, a loosely uh, arranged mass of fibers and cells of several types. So some of these uh, cells are secretory, uh, others store food or waste products and still others have huge mitochondria and function in regeneration. Uh, you know the platyhelminths they have strong regeneration. So the internal organs are so intimately embedded in these parenchymal cells that if you want to dissect these uh, animals, it is nearly impossible. Uh, the bulk of the parenchyma uh, probably is composed of uh, myocytons. The muscle uh, fibers, they course or they run through the parenchyma, the parenchymal cells. Uh, contractile uh, portion of muscle fiber are uh, rarely uh, striated and are usually arranged in one or two longitudinal layers near the body surface. Uh, circular and dorsoventral fibers also present or they may they are also present or occur. The nervous system of acyl uh, turbularians uh, includes central and peripheral components. The central nervous system consisting of ganglia. Ganglia is a, a mass of new, uh, neurons or, or nerve cells uh, around the stratocytes or uh, the stratocyst, and uh, the peripheral portion consisting of a network supplying the epithelium muscles and uh, sensory structures. So this is a, this is a typical structure of. Uh, uh, plate helminth worm. Uh, this this is the whole body of the plate helminth whole body, or the whole worm. Uh, then the in B you can see the dorsal portion of the nervous system. So this uh, the network you can see is the nervous system, and these are the ganglia. Uh, number one, this one is frontal organ. Number two, these are the eyes. Uh, three, these are the stratocysts. Four is uh, this is mouth, five is the penis, and six is this is brain, brain in the form of ganglia. Okay. Uh, now in the uh, larger uh, or more uh, structurally more uh, complex turbularians and in trematodes and cystodes, the nerve system is an orthogon, mean it's uh, just like a ladder. Having two like poles, they're running uh, on the lateral sides, uh, and uh, then like the rugs of the leaders, which with paired ganglia near the interior end, uh, nerves running anteriorly towards sensory or hold fast organs, and longitudinal nerves trunks extending posteriorly to near the end of the body. 
So the number of uh, trunks uh, they varies, but most trunks are literal and are connected by transverse commissures. So as I told you, it's just like uh, uh, a ladder. So the, they have the trunks uh, run literally, uh, lateral side to the little size of the body, and they are connected by transverse commissures, just like the uh, rugs of the uh, ladder. So sensory elements are abundant, especially interpolarians, and um, may be distributed in a variety of patterns depending on the uh, the tactile cells, uh, chemoreceptors, eye spots, and stratocysts have been found. These are present in these worms. The nervous system of turbolarians have has attracted the interest of uh, a number of recent researchers, primarily because this system may hold clues to the evolutionary uh, origin of bilateral symmetry in animals so it's very important uh, most of this work is uh, done in the electron microscope level and as might be expected has shown the diversity of uh, neuron types and synaptic junction is greater the digestive system um, is typically uh, a blind sac uh, because their elementary canal is in, incomplete. Uh, all the seals and a few trematodes such as Anenterotrema and uh, Ostromicropellus species, uh, they have only uh, a mouth the, but no permanent gut. Food being, it is uh, the food is digested by individual cells of the pharenchyma, so they don't have proper like, digestive system. Most uh, uh, Flatworms have a mouth near the anterior end, and many turboradians and most matodes have muscular pharynx behind their mouth, uh, which uh, with, with which they suck in food. Uh, the, the pharynx acting as a suction pump. Uh, and the family planarian, as well as and some other free living flatworms, the mouth is located midventrally, and the pharynx can be extended outward. Mean that they have like uh, the protruding uh, pharynx it may uh, come out for the sucking of food uh, the gut varies uh, from a simple sac to highly branched tube but only uh, rarely does a platform have anus uh, digestion is a uh, uh, primarily uh, extracellular um, with phagocytosis by intestinal epithelium which is the, the, the gastrodermis, which is known as the intestinal epithelium is known as gastrodermis. Um, uh, have phagocytic cells and uh, with the phagocytosis they uh, uh, do their digestion, which may contain both secretory and phagocytic cells. So th there are secretory, both secretory and phagocytic cells are present in the gastrodermis. So undigested uh, wastes, um, as we discussed, there is no anus. So, and they are incomplete digestive system, so the undigested waste are eliminated through the mouth. Our digestive system is completely absent from all life cycle stages of cystodes. So, the functional unit of most flatworms, uh, like excretion system, is in the form of flame cells, or they are known as protonephridia or protonephridium. Uh, we will discuss their structure, it's, uh, I think, in the next slide. Uh, and we are also familiar, I think, uh, with this structure because uh, we all have studied this structure in detail in FSC and uh, then in, uh, in metric in FSC and then in BSC also. So it's a single cell with a tuft of regilia uh, that extend into a delicate uh, tubule, uh, which may consist of another cell interdigitating uh, digitating, uh, with the first one. And so uh, this is the uh, flame cell. Um, you know, the, the, this is known as flame cell, the mitochondria and the nucleus and all these things are there. They have this uh, tube, this collecting tube, uh, and there are these uh, flame cells. Uh, these, uh, they, they move uh, and producing a force where the liquids, they filter into this uh, lumen of this collecting tubule and where they excrete it outside the body through nephridium force. Uh, 
um, is in the case uh, uh, with the nervous system ultra structures uh, structural studies aimed uh, partially at uncovering characters of evolutionary significance have shown that pretty helminths excretory system are four more uh, four uh, far more uh, complex than originally it was thought uh, the scientist uh, road he showed the detailed structure of the flame cell uh, system is related more to evolutionary relationship than to the warm uh, habitat have warm habitat a uh, proton uh, system have at least three types of flame cells and is many kind of tubule cells excess water which may contain soluble nitrogenous waste is forced into the tubule which join with other tubule eventually to be uh, eliminated uh, through one or more excretory pores so the filtration uh, the filtration occur uh, through minute uh, slits form by rods or extensions of the cell correctly called a wear an old english wear is a fence which which will be which was to be placed in a stream to catch fishes so in parasitic platforms the wear is formed by rod uh, rods from both uh, uh, the terminal flagellated cells the cryptocytes and a tubule and is thus referred to as two cell wear because excreta are mainly excess water the system is often referred uh, to as an osmoregulatory system with with excretion of other waste uh, waste considered as secondary function uh, some species have excretory uh, bladder uh, just inside the pore now the reproductive system so reproductive uh, reproductive systems uh, follow a common basic pattern in all uh, platyhelminth swarms however extreme variations of uh, this basic pattern are found among different groups of platyhelminths most species are uh, monoecious uh, but some or a few are they are dioecious uh, reproductive cyst organs are so important in identification of parasites and therefore are considered in great detail for each group so uh, they are very important the reproductive organs are very important in the identification of different uh, these pretty helminth parasites uh, most uh, hermaphrodites can fertilize their own eggs but uh, you know uh, uh, cross fertilization occur as a routine uh, some uh, turbinarians uh, and cystodes they practice uh, hypodermic impregna impregnation uh, which is a, a sperm transfer through piercing the body wall with a male organ uh, the serous and injecting sperm into the parenchyma of the recipient so how sperm find their way into the female system is not known uh, most forms however deposit sperm directly into the female tract a uh, young or usually born with eggs and uh, within egg membranes but a few species are viviparous or oviviparous in a parasitic species and some uh, turbinarians egg yolk is supplied uh, by cells uh, other than the oom and eggs are thus ectolysetal ectolysetal uh, lysetal eggs are a types of eggs uh, based on the, the distribution of yolk so if you don't know uh, kindly talk to your um, developmental biology teacher or you can search it for yourself asexual reproduction is also uh, common in trematodes and a few cystodes next we will talk about uh, the uh, platyhelminth systematics or the classification so phylogeny of platyhelminths is one of the most active areas of research in invertebrate biology with many workers uh, attracting uh, attacking evolutionary problems uh, from a variety of directions uh, however a great deal of useful information is found in older literature organized according to traditional uh, classification historically uh, uh, this phylum Uh, include four classes number 1 uh, turbinaria the two monogenia uh, then the trematoda or digenia and then the cystoda so these are the four classes 
features uh, such as the nature of the egg yolk, uh, serous spermatogenesis, uh, uh, body wall musculature and structures of uh, excretory organs especially the flame cells are considered important morphologically uh, and are useful in the helminths classification. So, uh, morphologically uh, these, structure, uh, these structures, the excretory organs such as the flame cells, uh, the body wall, the musculature, the spermatogenesis, egg yolks, these are the these these are, are like used in the uh, classification of the lady helmets. Uh, molecular characteristics uh, that have uh, been used in uh, include 18s and 28s ribosomal DNA sequences, uh, gene for cytochrome oxidase and ADH hydrogenase, and elongation factor 1 alpha and immunochemistry of neuro transmitters so th these are like uh, the, the classical ways but uh, the modern ways uh, of classification or accurate classification of uh, the dna sequencing so in modern uh, or molecular uh, biology for their uh, accurate classification uh, 18s and 28s ribosomal dna sequences also are used uh, or the cytochrome oxidase uh, or the NADH dehydrogenase, these genes are used for uh, like uh, their uh, classification. Uh, phylogenies uh, based on molecular characters do not always agree uh, with those based on morphology. So, uh, as I told you, these are the modern and accurate technologies. So, these morphologically classification, some may be, uh, some of them may become contradictory with these the uh, molecular uh, classifications because these are very accurate one. So, classification of pyramidal elements with emphasis on uh, commensal and parasitic representatives. So, subphylum uh, catenulida. They lack a frontal organ and have monociliated epidermal cell. These are further, the, the flatty helminths is uh, further divided into subphylum uh, catenulida. And this catenulida, these are worms which lack frontal organ and have monociliated epidermal cells. Then there is a, a subphylum. Uh, the subphylum U uh, platyhelminths. The second subphylum is the first uh, subphylum is uh, catenulida. The second subphylum is uh, U platyhelminths. With uh, the, the, the characteristics is with they are with frontal organ, uh, high density of epidermal cilia and multi-flagellated flame cells uh, when present. Okay, then there are uh, super classes like the super class one. There is acylomorpha, uh, reduction and loss of proteinuria and a modified uh, uh, or uh, missing gut tips of cilia with a distinct step. And then there is a super class uh, ribdytophora uh, with lim limulated ribdites, a do gland adhesive system and multi-flagellated flame cells. Then there is a class uh, rhabdocelia, rhabdocelia with a bulbous pharynx and simple intestine. The, there is order uh, inside the rhabdocelia, there is order uh, delelioida uh, and then there is super order uh, teminocephalidae. Cephalida. Uh, these are with the cephalic tentacles. Uh, this there is the, then there is sub super class new dermata with ectolysetal eggs. These are with ectolysetal eggs. Loss of larval ciliated epidermis. Acquisition of a sensational adult epidermis. New dermata is considered a monophyletic. Group. Then there is class trematoda, posterior adhesive organ a sucker is present, male genital pore opening into an atrium, adults with pharynx near the older sucker, subclass Spidobothria. 
I have characteristics uh, with specialized microvilli on and microtubules and neodermis. Posterior suckers divided into compartments measured. Uh, divided into order sp de both reformis uh, then there are class then there is subclass digenia uh, the having uh, the characteristics like first larva stage is called miracidium life cycle with one or more sporocyst generation and circadial stages and gut development is pediomorphic important orders uh, are like uh, ferrumpistomiformis and uh, echinostomiformis there is the hemuriformis and uh, stregiuriformis uh, and then there is the uh, uh, ophistoriciformis and then there is the uh, pleguriciformis and then there is class uh, monogenedia or monogenedi oncomeracidium larva with three ciliary bands Adults with single testes, all ectoparasitics, class Cystoda, lake intestine, sarcomere uh, uh, pneumorphic and somewhat reduced in size, oral sucker and pharynx is vestigial, larval uh, sarco uh, uh, sarcomere with 10 hooks. Then there is a class Cystodaria, um, order Gyrocotyledia or Gyrocotyledi, Gyrocotyledi. Rosette with a funnel at posterior end, body margins uh, crenulate, order uh, Amphilinidae, Amphilinidae, Amphilinidae. Genital pores at posterior end, uterus is N shaped, subclass U cystoda, idols are polyzoic, six hook larval sarcoma lost during uh, antogen. Life cycle with more than one host and having orders like a pseudo. Phyllolady, uh, Pseudophyllady, Cherophyllady, and Spetobothryde. Then there is a Cyclophyllady, then Proteocephalata, and then there is Tetraphyllady, and Tripenorenchia. Tri, tri, or Tripeno, Tripeno. Renka, Trypheno Renka. So we divided into three portions Trypheno Renka. Classification of littlements is uh, found in old literature. So in old literature, uh, we have uh, classification like Cluster Valeria. These are uh, most, most of them, they are mostly free living or warm and terrestrial, freshwater and marine environments. Some are commensals or parasites of invertebrates, especially of echinoderms and mollusks. Then there is class monogenia. The all parasitic, mainly on the skin on gills of fish. Although mostly ectoparasite, a few living within the uh, stomodium, the proctodium, proctodium and their uh, diverticula. Then there is class trematoda. All parasitic, mainly in the digestive tract of all classes of vertebrates. Subclass Digenia. At least two hosts in life cycle. First, almost always a mollusk. Perhaps most diversification in bony marine fish, although many species in all other groups of vertebrates. Subclass uh, Spidogestria. Aspidogastria have characteristics like most with only one host or mollusk. A few mature and turtle or fishes 
with mollusk or lobster intermediate host. Then this uh, subclass uh, Didymozoidia, Didymozoidia, tissue dwelling parasites of fish. No complete life cycle known, but intermediate hosts may not be required. The last one is the class Historia. So these are the classical, uh, sorry, the, these are the classical classification in the, in the literature, uh, which divide fly predators into four classes. All parasitic common in all classes of vertebrate except agnathan classes intermediate host required for almost all species and um, re reference from gerald schmidt foundation of astrology 8 edition thank you so much for watching and listening